Choosing your main weapon in any game is a serious matter, but that's especially true in an RPG like Monster Hunter. With Wild set to release early on in 2025, many hunters will be faced with the challenge of choosing their main squeeze for their first playthrough. However, in Wilds, we actually do know that you'll be able to carry two weapons at once, one on your person and one on your mount, with the ability to swap in between, so that should make having to decide just a bit easier, which is also what I want to do in today's video. I'm going to try to cover each weapon of the 14 in a minute or less, that way you can make a more informed decision on which two weapons you'll want to main in Monster Hunter Wilds. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now I'm going to break down the weapons into three different classes. We'll have heavy weapons, light weapons, and skill weapons. Now that's of course not to say that all weapons don't take skill. However, these weapons tend to be a bit more technical than the others, requiring you to pay extra attention to gauges or files or extracts in order to get the maximum damage out of the weapon. Starting off with the heavy weapons. These tend to have slower attack patterns focusing more on charging up to maximum power, with the trade-off being that their single hit damage is going to be much higher than that of the light weapons. At number one we have Greatsword. This is a fantastic weapon that has been in all of the Monster Hunter games, and here's where you'll see your highest damage numbers. You can charge up attacks to deal heavy damage, you can also use the large blade to guard against incoming attacks, and Greatsword commands the most powerful move in the game, which is the True Charge Slash. This is a relatively beginner-friendly weapon that does require decent timing, spacing, and monster knowledge in order to be used to its highest potential. The second heavy weapon is the Hammer. Hammer deals blunt damage and is typically best utilized to pulverize the monster's skull to absolute mush. Just like Greatsword, you can charge up attacks to deal more damage and get more stun, but it does have a bit less reach than Greatsword. The trade-off being that Hammer has quicker movement speed than Greatsword when unsheathed, so that's a pretty nice upside. If you like heavy, crushing combos and the ability to KO the monster, then Hammer will be the right choice for you. The third heavy weapon we're going to talk about today is Lance. Lance is far and above the best defensive option in Monster Hunter, with a massive shield and a very long-reaching weapon. You'll be able to tank through anything with this bad boy right here. Now some people think that the lance is slow, but skill issue? No, I'm just kidding. If you play it right, it can be extremely mobile. Now it excels at guarding and countering against monster attacks, with its long reaching and quick poke attacks being great to deal solid damage while maintaining a safe distance. Even if you don't want to main this weapon, this is a great one to bring along if you don't know a fight and you want to be able to not cart while you're learning the monster's moves. Next is the Gun Lance. This is the Lance's American cousin. The Gun Lance sports the same giant shield and poke ability of the Lance, but also gains some shelling attacks that you can fire at the monster from various distances, with the trade-off being that it doesn't have any counterattacks. While not commanding the firing range of some of the later gun weapons that we'll see in this list, you can use shelling types like long shelling to safely shoot the monster from a further distance than any melee weapon can hit. This is a really fun weapon to use, and if you think Lance is a bit too much about tanking and countering, then the Gun Lance might be right for you. Our final heavy weapon is the Heavy Bowgun. The Heavy Bowgun has been far and away the strongest weapon in the previous two mainline games and even further back, as it has a massive ammo capacity, hard-hitting shot types, and can even be affixed with a shield to block attacks, albeit not as well as Lance or Gun Lance or some of the other guarding weapons. You can choose short or long range style ammos, you can use things like element or status, you can use sticky bombs to stun monsters, or even shoot mortar like cluster ammo to carpet bomb your foes. The trade off is it has very slow movement speed and you need to reload your ammos after expending a clip. This is easily one of the most diverse weapons in the game and there's really not a situation where the HBG does not excel. So up next are the light weapon class. Light weapons have much quicker attack combos and patterns compared to the heavy weapons, but don't let that make you think that they are weaker. At number one, we have sword and shield. This is the bread and butter starting weapon for Monster Hunter, but definitely don't let that fool you. Sword and shield has some incredible versatility, including rapid sword attacks, a solid shield that can be used for both guarding and bashing the monster, 
and the ability to utilize items while your weapon is still unsheathed. This is likely going to be the best weapon for your beginner to learn the game with, as it can be used easily in any scenario. And even though this is a great beginner weapon, the skill ceiling for Sword and Shield is very high, and the most skilled players make this weapon look more powerful than you could imagine. If you're really unsure on where to start, pick the Sword and Shield. The second light weapon are the Dual Blades. Now these are the fastest hitting melee weapons in the game, making them great for elemental and status use. Dual Blades require you to pay good attention to your stamina bar, as Dual Blades have a nice little trick up their sleeve. By switching into a mode called Demon Mode, you unlock a plethora of fast hitting but high damaging attacks. However, this mode constantly drains your stamina. Learning to manage your stamina while in this mode is paramount to becoming a Dual Blade Master. Real quick, guys, if you are enjoying the content so far, you should definitely consider subscribing, as over 90% of you guys watching the last month aren't. I cover all kinds of Monster Hunter content like builds, guides, hidden facts, and much more. Subscribing is totally free, and you can always change your mind later. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back into the weapons with number three, the Longsword. This is far and above the most popular weapon in the series. It has incredible reach, great counterattacks, and very respectable damage. This weapon is, like Sword and Shield, very good for beginners, but again, when played at the highest level, is incredible to witness. The general loop for Longsword is to build up your spirit gauge, as each level of the gauge gives you more damage, and then using that highest level to unleash some of your highest damaging attacks. You can also use its incredible arsenal of counterattacks to punish monster moves without needing to dodge or guard. There's definitely a reason why this weapon has been number one for a long time, and you only need to try it out to find out why. It's because of weebs. You're all a bunch of filthy weebs. The final weapon in the light weapon category is the light bowgun. This is the other gun weapon. The LBG provides incredible safety. It has great ranged attacks and incredible agility. You'll have no issues staying away from monster attacks while still dealing some of the highest damage in the game. You can, like Heavy Bowgun, utilize long or short range ammos, elemental ammo, status ammos to paralyze sleep or poison monsters, as well as much, much more. If you find Heavy Bowgun to be a bit too cumbersome, but you still like the ranged options of gunning, then Light Bowgun is the weapon for you. Now on to the third and final category, which is the skill weapons. These tend to have a specific mechanic that you also need to juggle besides something like ammo or stamina in order to get your weapon to deal maximum damage. The first of these weapons is the Hunting Horn. It's been a staple in the Monster Hunter series like Great Sword or Long Sword. However, this requires you to pay a bit more attention to exactly what attack inputs you use. Each attack input corresponds to a note that your Hunting Horn can play. And by playing notes in a certain order, you can queue up songs. You can then play those songs to activate buffs for yourself and your teammates, things like attack up, defense up, stamina up, and a bunch more. Now don't be fooled though, this isn't just some support weapon that you'll sit in the corner and buff your teammates, it can also deal great damage. And you can aggressively bash in some monster brains, kind of like a hammer, while you inspire your fellow hunters with buffs. The second weapon in the skill category is the Switch Axe. This weapon can transform, or switch, <laughs> between an axe mode and a sword mode. The axe mode has great reach and quicker movement speed, with the sword mode having less mobility, however it has much more damage and it can be charged up by landing consecutive attacks in sword mode, and this allows you to unleash some incredibly powerful file attacks. In some instances you can even latch onto monsters, stab your weapon inside their head, and let off a massive explosion that deals huge damage. Now in most entries you couldn't guard with the switch axe, but in wilds the weapon overview showed what looked to be a counter attack or parry. Switch axe does take a lot to learn the mechanics, but once you do you're going to be absolutely unstoppable. The third skill weapon is charge blade. Now this is arguably, not even really arguably, this is the most complex weapon in the series. Charge Blade is basically Sword and Shield on steroids. You again transform between a quicker Sword and Shield mode and a heavier, harder hitting Axe mode. You use the Sword mode to build up energy, store them in your files and your shield and your sword. Then you can use Axe mode to unleash devastating blows that make those files explode on the monster. This weapon is the hardest to learn how to use as it has a ton of combos and gimmicks. 
but becomes incredibly fluid and rewarding once you get it down. The next skill weapon is the Insect Glaive. This is an incredibly mobile weapon, and it allows you to do your standard grounded attacks much like the other weapons, but you can also launch yourself into the air and slice monsters to ribbons from up above. You also get a little buddy called a Kinsect, which can be used to harvest up to three different extracts from the monster that you're fighting, each extract providing a different benefit. Having all three at once gives you access to a powerful triple buff as well as some new moves. Insect Glaive is also great for mounting the monster, meaning that your teammates get a free knockdown to deal damage. It can be a bit stamina intensive, and keeping track of your extracts and how long that they are lasting can take some getting used to, but this is easily the flashiest weapon that you can play in the Monster Hunter series. Last, but certainly not least, is the bow. Now this seems simple at first look, but it actually has an incredibly high skill ceiling and the damage to match. You can apply different coatings to your arrows to increase your damage, apply statuses, or give yourself better close range capabilities. This weapon is actually even more stamina intensive than even dual blades or insect glaive, so being able to manage your stamina is key to learning the bow. A new feature that we've seen in wilds is actually the tracking arrow which can be stuck into the monster, allowing all subsequent arrows for a certain amount of time to automatically home in on that tracker and hit the monster. So if you're worried about quickly aiming and you found bow in older games to be a bit tough, this could be a huge help to you. Bow also gets a sort of counter where if you perfectly time a slide to go through an attack, you'll take no damage and your next attack will be at the next charge level. Again, this is a very technical weapon, but it is incredibly powerful once you get it down. Now, of course, this is just a very basic overview of each of the 14 weapons. There's about a million more things I could say for each weapon. However, I wanted to keep this video to a manageable length. The biggest takeaway that you can get from this is a two-parter. Part one, there are no bad weapons. When you take the time to learn a weapon, it can always be good and work in any scenario. And part two, you get to bring two weapons with you in wilds, so you're not stuck with just one. So if you've been looking to try something out, but you're afraid to stay away from your main weapon during your first playthrough, throw it in the satchel, bring it as a second weapon, and try it out on hunts that you know. Guys, if you did find this video helpful, definitely consider dropping a like down below. It's a totally free way to support this video and my channel. If you're new to my channel, if you're a regular here, or if you just want more Monster Hunter content like this, you should definitely subscribe. Again, it's totally free, it supports the channel, and you can always change your mind later if you find the content just isn't for you. With all that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I wish you all a good day, and happy hunting.